All right. Well, thank you very much. There are some basic questions that are going to be asked, and uh, I'll just go ahead and get those out of the way first. I, uh, one having to do with um, the INF. You know, we uh, when you get out of Washington and you talk to more normal people, <laughs> go back home, and uh, the question is, you know, if, if uh, China is not a signatory to the INF, Russia is, but they violate it. We are. We don't violate it. Uh, I ask you, Secretary Mattis, do you think that the that that be currently as it stands becomes a unilateral limitation on the United States and our capabilities? Uh, Senator, you know if it could become a, a unilateral limitation on us. However, at this point, we are trying to bring Russia back into compliance with the mm -hmm. INF. That does not address the entirety of your question, of course, being that there's only two countries that have signed this. Part of the reason uh, we are taking some of the steps outlined in the Nuclear Posture <coughs> Review are to put Russia in a position to see a benefit to themselves to coming back in compliance. We will have to look more broadly at arms control, and I believe that as we modernize the nuclear deterrent, that will put our diplomats in a good position to initiate those discussions with the other countries that are not signatories. Now, if, the, if Russia does not come back, though, uh, as we're hoping that they will into compliance. Uh, what situation would we be in then? Uh, Senator, when nations don't live up to treaties, treaties are not sustainable. We well, would have to deal with that if okay. we're unsustainable. That, that answers the question. I appreciate that. Uh, on end strength, one of the most expensive, one of the most critical parts of this budget, I'm sure that uh, Secretary Norcos would agree with that. Uh, as you point out, uh, fiscal year 18, it would be, it's going to be 9,500, then 19, 15,600, and 20, up to 23, up, up to 56,000. Now, it's already a problem in, in, uh, uh, in, in recruiting, and so I'd like to ask you, uh, either you or, or, or the Secretary or, or General Dumford, uh, are you confident we're going to meet these uh, these goals? Because it seems to me like you can only do it through two ways, either retention or recruiting. What are your thoughts about uh, meeting these, um, these goals? Pretty ambitious. Uh, they are ambitious, uh, Senator, especially in light of the improving U.S. economy. And it's a totally volunteer force. We even call it a totally recruited force. Our recruiters have to be very... Uh, assertive in getting out there and, and selling the military. Uh, I would tell you right now that the U.S. Army's retention has allowed them to actually lower their recruiting goal for this year because they're retaining more than they anticipated, which is a good sign. So I'm confident without lowering our quality standards uh, that we can maintain this modest increase uh, of truth. But I'll pass it over to the chairman for any thoughts he has on that. Yeah. Senator, enough. I was going to highlight that I think the Army is a, is a bellwether for all of us, and we just actually had a conversation with the Army this week to talk about their reduction of their uh, recruiting efforts as a result of high retention. Mm -hmm. But I think at the end of the day, what the Secretary said is what we're all focused on, and that is making sure that we're recruiting and retaining a high-quality force. My judgment is right now from getting out and visiting uh, the force as well as discussing it with the chiefs that today uh, we are recruiting and retaining a high-quality force. We don't take that for granted, particularly in a competitive economic environment. But I think the size of the force right now can be sustained with quality people. And do, you, are, do you agree with those numbers from now through uh, fiscal 23? I, I do, I do, Senator, because the focus in the budget this year uh, and last year has been to make sure that the force we have is capable and lethal. And so these numbers that we're increasing really are filling holes to make the units that we have complete. Okay. Now, lastly, on the budget, the, the two-year budget we did for fiscal 18 and 19, I have to say it was a lousy budget, and it was one that uh, I – it was a very difficult thing for me to vote for, and the only reason I did is the same reason that we were here meeting about this morning. So what I'd like to have each of you do, uh, primarily you, uh, General Dunford, what would have happened if we, instead of what we did – if we just went the normal CR route, and what is since we're going to have to face this in the future, and now is the time to start working for it because we're talking about fiscal year 20 and beyond, what will happen if we are successful in our goals for fiscal years 18 and 19, and we don't uh, have the same opportunities to continue that in fiscal for fiscal year 20? 
Hey, Senator, thanks for that question. One of the, one of the things I think we, we all talk about a lot is our overall competitive advantage. And I think back in 2000, 2001, we could take it for granted that we had a competitive advantage over any potential adversary. And that was particularly in our ability to project power anywhere in the world we needed to to advance our interests. What has happened over time is that competitive advantage has eroded. And, and if we had not had the budget in 17, 18, and 19, and the projections that we have beyond 17 and 18 and 19, I think what, what really is at risk overall is our competitive advantage over any potential adversary. I think that adversely affects the relationship we have with allies and partners. It adversely affects the deterrence against, uh, against our potential adversaries, and clearly it would affect our ability to respond in the event that deterrence fails. So, I mean, I think there really is a, a broader, in addition to the readiness issues and some of the, some of the other important uh, issues that we discuss, the overall strategic impact of, of, the, uh, of sequestration and, uh, and not getting the budget that we had in 17 and 18, I think really is uh, our ability to project power and address all those areas I mentioned, assurance, deterrence, and responsiveness. So uh, from 20 on, it would be a crisis if we did not. If we return to uh, the Budget Control Act and, and sequestration levels, uh, we would not have completed the recovery that we've been on. This, as, as you pointed out in the beginning, Senator Inhofe, the challenges that we have right now took us 10 or 15 years to, get, to, to uh, develop. It's going to take us more than two or three years to recover from those challenges. I understand that. You agree, I assume. Uh, I agree, uh, Senator, 100 percent. And as the ranking member pointed out, we have future capabilities we must develop now if we're going to carry out our responsibilities to those who sit before this committee in the years ahead. So the dangers we can see growing, and I think that we're going to have to maintain ourselves at the, uh, at the cutting edge of technology, organization, and combat lethality. Yes. I, I agree, and I think we need to be starting to talk about that now. Senator Reed. Uh, 